This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by NHLiberty.org Let's talk Adam Kokesh, the Iraq Veterans Against the War Liberty Activist, arrested for openly carrying a shotgun in D.C. George Donnelly, from shieldmutual.com, I think I've got that URL right, uh, makes a good point when he says you shouldn't trash too much on a person who's in jail because it's hard for them to defend themselves. On the other hand, there are plenty of people who are in jail who deserve to be trashed on. So I, I'm going to... Well, Adam is one of those characters who brings out the ambivalence in me like no one else. Like, I see so many good things that he does and so many good things about him and so much just what seems to be foolishness. It's all in the same person. So let me attempt to provide a, an attempted precise take on this complex character. First of all, what made me think I ought to do a talk, talking, a talk about him is that he, he called into Free Talk Live, I guess, around July 5th, and um, the call was just really interesting. He was talking about you know the, the the attempted uh you know secession thing they were going to do all around the country it was going to be what were they going to call it the, the the final american revolution or something like that and of course this is one of adams maybe one of adams problems it seems like he sort of tends to overstate or overblow things in advance and so when they happen even though they might be pretty effective they don't seem quite as effective as what he was saying they were you know are implying that they were going to be so that's a lesson that all of us can learn from adam is don't don't overstate our expectations. Don't raise expectations too much about something you're going to do. Be humble. I don't think that's real easy for Adam. <laughs> but Adam, start being humble as soon as you get out, which I pray for your soon release. You shouldn't be in jail just for possessing a firearm in the wrong place. But anyway, what was neat about Adam's call, though, is he had... He just has a different take on certain things. He has like, like he has new and different words that I've never heard before, which I kind of like. Uh, there was this, uh, what was he said, a tech, technic, technicalitarian, <laughs> a new term that he's, and he, I guess he's talking about these urban legendists who think that you can go into court and talk about the uniform form commercial code and get anywhere with it, you know, or that you can, you can. Uh, do this complicated legal stuff that takes years to research and the court's not going to just laugh at you and put you in jail. Well, I think that was his word for them. Uh, and he had another really interesting concept. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think he had a word for it, but what he was talking about was he said, uh, he said, even if I'm in, you know, thrown in jail and he said, he he'd said this during his phone call before he went to jail and he was arrested, you know, a few days after I, after I guess this shotgun thing. And he said, if I get disappeared or if I, uh, if you hear me from jail telling you to call off next July 4th's demonstration, then just ignore me. He's, you know, I'm, I'm under duress. And so I kind of like that idea of that sort of um, Henri Guisson, the man who uh, essentially defended Switzerland against the Nazis, used to say, he said, okay, this after things start getting crazy here, if they actually send the tanks in, what you do is you start ignoring <laughs> what, what, what the central government tells you. If it sounds like surrender, if they tell you to do anything like surrender, you are to ignore the order and treat it as government prop, or, you know, or enemy propaganda. Like someone, if someone's got a gun to their head and they're telling you to, to surrender. It doesn't count. So I thought that was pretty wise of Adam to make that statement. And I'm going to try to remember that between now and July 4th. If Adam Kokesh is not able to make something happen on July 4th next year, uh, I may be more likely to talk about it or, you know, participate in some way. I'm an efficiency activist. I don't go to every event. But in my mind, he just made that next July 4th event more important by putting it that way. By sort of raising the ghost of Henri Guisson. I wish that more of us would do that. And it gave me an excuse. It's given me an excuse to talk about that kind of concept, which I wish... I should have done a video about this before, or an audio about it before. But uh, this something, you know, similar to this sort of happened with uh, activist Jillian Batty, who was a... Uh, she's a, um, a food activist. She makes great food. That's her, her business. But she also apparently was caught, allegedly, carrying marijuana to Porkfest in 2012. And so she spent all of Porkfest, I think, in Texas, in jail, uh, in you know, when she was attempting to get here. So 
while she was in jail, uh, she got an unusual amount of support since it was kind of happening during Porkfest and she was notably missing. And uh, now I don't know exactly if she informed the activists that she wanted them to stop supporting her in jail or whatever, but whatever happened was they retaliated against her inside that jail. They did something to her. I don't know precisely what or what series of things they did to her to hurt her as a result of uh, the fact that people were calling and questioning the jail about what her status was. So my thinking is it's probably a good idea to make clear to the public in advance before you are disappeared <laughs> or before you are put in Stockholm Syndrome spot, before you have a gun to your head, make clear to the public what you want them to do, whether you want them to actually listen to anything you say while you've got a gun to your head. And I would like to say that if if you're hearing anything that sounds like stand down or surrender when it comes to peaceable activism, if I'm saying anything about no, 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 stop doing peace, this or that peaceable activism in support of me because you know I've got a gun to my head, just ignore me and go do it. <laughs> I'll, I might say whatever they tell me to, but you are to ignore me. Treat me like uh, the government of Switzerland, and you're the Swiss. You freedom fighter, the Nazis are coming, and you've got it. You're hearing a radio broadcast telling you to stand down or do less. Don't listen. I would almost go so far as to ask whether or not it might be appropriate to ignore what anybody says who's got a gun to their head without trying to find out what they really want because it's, you, you, it's like getting zero information it's like a message fragment you don't even know what they're really what they really want to tell you because the their status is completely compromised anyway good show with that one idea adam uh some of the rest of the stuff you know like clank saying you're gonna do one type of protest in dc then canceling it then doing something else and then not in DC, and then you're doing the shotgun thing in DC, which is probably not the best place to do it because it's just scattershot activism, it seems like. But at least he's doing something. At least you're doing something, Adam. You're doing a lot better than a lot of folks, and you're getting on the mainstream press. The idea of running for president as a secession candidate or an abolition of the federal government candidate, I like that. I like that. So, you know, it's like anything else. Can't expect other activists to be perfect. But the narrative surrounding Adam these days, it just seems like the kind of narrative you might, you know, that the government might want to have happening, you know, in the sense that this is all the talk on Free Talk Live was kind of downery, you know, oh, Adam Kokesh's event wasn't very good, wasn't very big. Probably a degree of regroup and refocus on Adam's part would do the trick. I'd like to say he should refocus on New Hampshire but apparently he doesn't want to live here for whatever reasons it gets to do with climate. I don't get it. The climate is pretty uncomfortable in a jail cell. And that's what you get when you live in Washington and you want freedom. Washington. Area, I should say. This edition of the Ridley Report was brought to you by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance at nhliberty.org. If you were to go to the State House and do this... <coughs> then you would step on the toes of a Liberty Alliance member because they're all over the place at the State House. They are there fighting for your freedom and they need your help. Visit the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance at nhliberty.org and join them. Or maybe I should say join us because I am a member. nhliberty.org